Oh, so I just started by cutting this piece of dowel that was one inch and an eighth on the chop saw. I cut three discs just in case if anything happened to one of them. Then I went over to the workbench and I just took a scribe and I punched a hole in the very center of the disc. I pre-drilled with a smaller drill bit and then went up to the size of drill bit that I needed and I drilled about halfway through the disc in a, a hole in the center then from the side of the disc I just drilled a pilot hole then took a bigger quarter inch drill bit and just drilled a trench into the center hole that I drilled earlier. I had to clean it up a little bit with a chisel but basically I made a dado that went halfway through the disc. And then I had this scrap piece of walnuts laying around. It was about a quarter inch thick by one and a half by one and a half. So it's about, it's a square. And then I uh, measured the very center and just scraped a hole and then drilled about halfway through it again. And did the same exact thing that I did to the round disc, but just did it to this square disc. So basically I, I would have two discs that would be exactly identical, but one would just be a square and one would be a, a circle. And by the way, this drill bit was a quarter inch drill bit. And then once that was done, I just had to do a little bit of sanding on them because they had a couple burrs and it was a little bit rough. Now they're nice and smooth. Then the next thing was to do to do was to just cut this quarter inch piece of steel round. I cut about a two inch piece of it. It was gonna be the rod that would hold the circular disc to the square disc. So what I had to do, I just had to drill a hole that was a five thirty seconds inch hole through the square disc and the round disc just so it would come through the trench and come um, right out the other side. So basically I had to drill two hole, a hole on each end of the uh, steel rod and also through the blocks. So as you can see I just drilled the hole in the walnut block and then in the piece of dowel. And now I'm drilling into the metal rod. I had to use a clamp to hold it. I had to stop for a minute because I broke a drill bit since they're so tiny and I had to get a new one and then just drill the rest of the way. And then once all the holes were drilled, as you can see, I have my steel rod and then my um, other two pieces. I just um, took these little finishing nails that would fit perfectly in the hole, and they are going to be my pivoting rod. So basically, I had to uh, first I had to grind a little bit on that rod because it was a little bit too long. But basically, what the little pivot rod would do would um, the Rock, the little uh, piece, nail would go through the wood and also go through the hole on the steel rod so whenever the steel rod would lift up it would just pivot on the nail and act like a hinge. So I, as you can see the steel rod goes into the slot, the nail go, slides in and then the uh, steel rod can pivot in the wood like a hinge. And then I just had to do the same on the round disc. and everything seemed to turn out really good. So then the final sanding, I just did some touch up sanding and just made it look a lot better. Once everything was done, I just 
uh, hit it with uh, um, a little a clear coat of lacquer. This was gloss lacquer just to make it uh, look nice and protect it from any grease from hands and any other stuff that could get onto it. I did about five coats. Then once that dried, I just heated up the pipe for my brand. And I did make a mistake, I should have put my brand on first, then the lacquer, because what happened was whenever I put the brand, the heat kind of made the lacquer bubble up, so I did sand the lacquer off again and did just another coat. So once my E was on there, I just used this mounting tape, which is double-sided tape, and it, it's kind of a cushiony kind of double-sided tape, so it's kind of foamy. <coughs> And what I did, I just uh, cut a little piece, put it on the round disc, and just trimmed it up. And this double sided tape is going to mount the, um, the pop socket onto my phone. for my phone um, here my phone is I took it out but um, here my pop socket my homemade pop socket is I sanded where I was gonna put it and then um, now let's peel off the double-sided tape oh beautiful so oddly satisfying all okay. right so now I'm thinking Awesome. Okay, so let's put my phone back in and let's test it out. You just pop it up, hold it. It holds, you can do selfie shots. Phone will not fall out. You can hold it. Awesome, it's perfect. Okay guys, that was the video. Now let's roll some pictures of it. Right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I learned tons of stuff while making it, and I thought it was really fun. Um, the only really wrong thing about this is the logo is upside down on the back part of the pop socket. But um, also, it can function as two um, functions. It can be as a stand, and it can also be just a pop socket, so you can hold your phone different. Um, if I would definitely recommend making one of these because it is very. It, works really good and I just made up this idea out of the blue I just my sister bought a pop socket so I was like oh I'll make one out of wood and it actually turned out way better than I thought it would but um, I want to say one more thing I changed my YouTube name to Eli's workshop instead of Milo and Eli so I just want to say that and thank you guys so much for so many subscribers so uh, thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video